Okay, so thank you for coming. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the meaning and role of scaling formula in uh, uh, a special example of two-dimensional uh, a two-dimensional model of statistical mechanics. So this is special example uh, is the double easy model, and uh, uh, this this system is a subcase of this of this model uh, is uh, given by the eight vertex model, uh, quantum chain, and other models that are probably more famous. But I, I want I want to introduce the, the, those others. I will introduce just the first one because it's more general. Um, Okay, what do I mean for double easing model? So I basically have two copies of the easing model. So the configuration is given by uh, two configuration of, of the easing model. So, um, so you have a, a variable that usually is called the spin. So uh, a sigma at a point x can be a plus or minus one. You, uh, you are on, on a lattice, actually on a finite, uh, uh, finite uh, sub lattice that I'm calling lambda. And you have two, two configuration of spins. So as I said, configuration of spin means that you assign a plus or minus one to each of the lattice sides. And uh, once given a configuration, you want to define an energy of your configuration. And this energy is given by three terms. You have two, two parameters, j and j4, and the function v. This v uh, decays uh, exponentially for, for x large. And so the energy is made of the, these three terms. The first term is just the product. So this uh, function, uh, e, th this letter ej means uh, e zero is the horizontal bond and e one is the, the, the vertical bond. So basically you are multiplying the spin uh, in uh, sites that are uh, nearest neighbors in the, on, on the lattice. And in front you have this, this coupling uh, j. And uh, you have the same, the same term, uh, the second term is the same as the first, but just for the second, uh, involving only the spin uh, prime. And then you have uh, an interaction between the two systems. So the interaction is given by product of the spin along uh, the same horizontal or vertical bond, product of the spin uh, prime along the same horizontal or vertical bond, and then uh, you put in the middle this V so that uh, when this y and x are far, uh, because of this condition, you, this is less, this, this is smaller. Um, so you sum over all position of x and y. So you have a configuration, and, and you have an energy for, for your configuration. And then, given the energy, you want to assign a probability. So the probability of a configuration is just e to the minus beta energy, the energy, Beta is a parameter, and has the meaning of inverse temperature. And uh, this 1 over z is just to normalize the probability, so that when you sum over all the sigma and sigma prime, you get 1. So basically, this formula is telling you that if you have a configuration with high energy, this is a, a exponentially uh, un unlikely. <coughs> so, OK, now you, you, you have your, your probabilistic uh, setup and you want to study two random variables in particular. Uh, the typical name are, uh, of these two, or plus or minus, are energy and crossover. This energy is not exactly the same energy that I was mentioning before. So it's a random variable, and it's just the, the again, it's the product of spin uh, in the same horizontal and vertical bond. And you sum the case in which you put the spin, the spin sigma prime, this is called energy, and the other is called crossover. Is the same, but you put a minus in, in, in between. Exactly, without also J four, yes, without the term in J four, yes. That's why it's called energy, and this one is the crossover. Um, <coughs> okay, uh, given, given given these two random variables, uh, you want to study the correlation. Uh, so correlation means expectation of the product minus the product of the expectations uh, when epsilon is plus or when epsilon is minus. And actually you want to do that in the thermodynamic limit because what I've done so far is for finite volume lambda. And uh, when I'm writing this formula, I'm also assuming that you are taking the limit of infinite lambda. So that now this x and y are on the lattice uh, Z2. 
Okay, so what is the typical uh, behavior of uh, a correlation? So uh, I'm interested for uh, x minus y large. So what typically happened, typically, uh, I mean, for, for most of the values of, of beta, that was the inverse temperature, you find that uh, the correlation are exponentially, uh, they decay exponentially. This mu is a, is a certain coefficient is non negative. But sometimes uh, it happened that uh, this mu is zero for certain value of, of beta. So when it's zero, it's no longer exponentially, uh, there's no exponential decay. This special value of, of, of beta is called the uh, critical beta. And, uh, uh, and when you are at critical, at critical uh, uh, beta, rather than exponential decay, you get another decay. It's, it's power, law, power law decay and uh, what, uh, with a certain exponent. And this x, that is x plus in the case of c plus and x minus in the case of c minus, uh, is what uh, I'm going to call a critical exponent of, of, of my model. Uh, you want to evaluate these this, this exponents. Uh, and there is another exponent coming from the fact that now you know that uh, mu, this parameter, uh, which usually is called the inverse uh, correlation length, you know that this mu is going to be zero when, when you are at BC. So when beta is very close to beta C, how this goes to zero, uh, well, you can, you can expect that it goes to zero like with, with this formula. And this nu here is going to be another critical exponent. So in other words, beta critical means that you are not, the, the correlation is not exponential decay, but it's just power law decay. The critical exponents are the exponents the, 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 that you find in this formula here and this, this formula here. So we have three critical exponents, x plus, x minus, and nu. So critical exponent of energy, critical exponent of crossover, and critical exponent of the inverse correlation length. Uh, OK, so uh, uh, I, I tell you some, some rigorous result about this model. So the first result was, was uh, by Baxter, which solved the we, 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 who gave uh, the, the exact solution of uh, one of these models. Let me return uh, for a moment uh, in the previous slide. So, uh, so basically for a special value of this V, uh, which is actually V equal to the Kronecker delta of X minus Y, um, your model is called the eight, eight vertex model for a reason that now I don't explain. A and Baxter uh, gave the exact solution of this uh, of this, uh, 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 of this model, the eight vertex model. Uh, so he, he, compute the, he computed the, some of the coefficients, some of the, some of the uh, critical exponents. And then also Johnson, Krinsky, and McCoy also computed other exponents. And uh, finally, in this paper of Mastro Pietro, he cons this, this is the only paper which is about uh, uh, any, any uh, double easing model. So the other two are just for the first two are just for the eight vertex model, and this last one is for all the models that I introduced so far. And again, he computed the the, the critical exponents. And uh, the point is that uh, these critical exponents nu x plus and x minus are function of the coupling j4 over j, and also of the function that you put in the interaction b. Now. This fact that the critical exponents are function of the model is actually a surprising thing. It's not what typically happens. So typically, uh, because of a conjecture called uh, universality, typically uh, uh, the, the, typical, the typical situation in statistical mechanics is that this, the critical exponents are just number. So they are not function of the special uh, model that you are studying. In other words, if you have a model and, and this model has a certain critical exponent, a, if you slightly change this model, the critical exponent should be should remain the same. So this is uh, uh, and th this conjecture is called universality. And uh, what is happening here is that these models are not universal. So uh, in fact, are called weak universal because they they depend on on, on the special model that you are analyzing. So when Baxter, actually before Baxter, uh, um, Lieb solved the, solved the six vertex model. And uh, also in the six vertex model, Lieb, uh, Lieb found 
that the, the exponents are, are dependent on the, on, on, on the coupling of, of your system. And so when Lib solved the six vertex model, people said, OK, but you are working on a special pathological model. Usually it should, shouldn't happen. But then Baxter found this other solution also of this eight vertex model. And so uh, people started believing that this is something that in two dimensions can, can really happen. Um, the, the reason for which this conjecture of, of universality is important is because, uh, as I said, uh, typically, I, I, for example, in, when you have a system in three dimensions, uh, one system, one famous system is the XY model. When you have the XY model in three dimensions, its critical uh, index are uh, just numbers. And actually, because of this hypothesis of universality, they are exactly the same critical exponent that you find in a, a true, in a real system, the liquid helium. So if you compare the critical exponents of the liquid, the liquid helium uh, that you find in an experiment with the, the uh, critical exponent of this XY model in three dimension, you find that this, this number agree with uh, a, 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 a great significance. So now in two dimension, uh, at least for this model, you cannot do this, this sort of thing because these are functions, are not numbers. But there is some sort of, of universality left, and, and this is what I'm uh, about to, to tell you. So although the critical exponent are function of the coupling, there are formulas that are uh, independent o o o on the coupling. So for example, this formula here, nu, nu is, is function of the coupling, x plus is function of the coupling, but in this combination they are, they are, they are model independent. So this formula is called the scaling relation, uh, was, was conjectured by these people for the model uh, at end, but actually in a more general setting, this sort of formula were conjectured by Widom and, and Fisher also. Um, and they are general in the sense that uh, they are always true in statistical mechanics, whatever is the model that you are analyzing, as soon as you have a concept of uh, infinite correlation length and, and so uh, when you have a concept of, uh, of critical temperature. So in any dimensions, in a, for any system, this formula should be true. And this formula should remain true also for our weak universal model. But besides this, uh, there is another formula that was conjectured by Kadanoff. And this formula is saying, again, x plus is model dependent, x minus is model dependent, but their product must be exactly one. So this is not a scaling formula because it's not, well, it's, co it's called extended scaling formula. It's different from the first because this second formula is not supposed to be true in generality in statistical mechanics, but it's supposed to be true only for a special class of system. Which system? So the one that in the scaling limit, uh, they, they are Turing model. So scaling limit is the formal limit in which you replace the lattice with uh, the continuous uh, uh, R2. And uh, the Turing model is, is, is a model, uh, it's a quantum field theory model, which is uh, exactly solvable. And from, from this model, in this model, this, this relation is true. And that's why it's natural to conjecture that also in the lattice model should remain true. So, uh, okay, so in this paper with Benfat and Astro Pietro, we proved that, that actually this, this, these two formulas remain uh, true. Um, they, they, are, they are true. Um, th there is a condition, J4, so the coupling, the, the, the coupling that is in front of the interaction between the two easing models must be small enough. Uh, so my last slide, it's not about open problems. So there are many open problems because, because you, can, uh, you can try to, to find uh, uh, the analog of these formulas for, for other systems which also are supposed to be, um, be non-universal, um, okay, which are slightly more difficult than this. But I, I want to finish with uh, uh, something on which I'm not uh, an expert, but maybe clarify a little bit what's the significance of the, of the of the scaling relation. So I, as I told you, we proved this, these two formulas for, uh, for um, uh, J4 small enough, but it's conjecture that actually this, this formula should be true also for uh, J4 large, 
but not too large. So sooner or later, there must be a threshold in J4. And uh, typically, in this sort of problem, you don't have an analytic tool to, to prove the threshold. So what people would like to do usually is to do a numerical simulation about the, po oops, about the position of, of, the, of, of the threshold. So unfortunately, currently is not for a reason that I'm not able to explain. But um, so there are numerical simulation about other critical exponents of this uh, of this system, a critical exponent that I haven't introduced. But for some reason, it's very difficult to do numerical simulation of, uh, um, for x plus and x minus. So it's it's difficult to 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 give a numerical proof. Uh, I mean, to to do a numerical check of this Kadanoff law. I'm saying Kadanoff no, and not the first one, the, the scaling relation, because the, sca the scaling relation was, is supposed to be true always. Only, only the second one, the one conjectured by Kadanoff, is supposed to be true uh, under special uh, condition. So there are no numerical simulation for this formula. And uh, let me explain the second point. So as I was telling you about uh, the liquid helium and, uh, uh, and the XY model, there is a model that is uh, related, uh, there is a real model, real system, real material, that is related to this double Ising model. So this real material is uh, selenium on uh, nickel. 100 means that the nickel is basically, um, you can neglect the interaction along a third direction, so it's, it's basically uh, a, a surface. Um, so you have this, this system. And this system is uh, conjectured by a physicist to be in the same universality class of uh, our uh, double Ising model. So this means that it should, should be true, uh, the, the, you should find this Kadanoff uh, law uh, in this real, doing a, a, an experiment in a laboratory for, for this true, true, true material, real material. Uh, the point is that, again, they can do something, but Unfortunately, they don't have the experimental verification of this Kadanov. Thank you. <laughs>